Xsense recently released their new 45 watt USB-C PD charger and in this episode we're going to take a look at it, we're going to tear it down and see how well it's built. They've got an Xsense, this is another charger, it's a one port wall charger. Let's take a look at uh, this one and then we'll uh, run it through its paces. And well, that didn't go as planned, did it? I was going to try and rip the plastic and I put a hole in the box. It's okay, I'll probably be putting a hole in the charger when I'm done here. Okay, so the charger slides out of the box like that. And here is the unit. It's a factory fresh, all sealed up. And here is the unit. This one is a USB-C charger. Specification wise, it'll take an input voltage of 100 to 240 volts. At 50 or 60 hertz, it'll draw one and a half amps. The output, it can provide five volts at three amps, nine volts at three amps, 15 volts at three amps, and 20 volts at two and a quarter amps for a maximum power output of 45 watts. Now, I don't have any equipment that I can test the higher voltage. I can test it on equipment for 5 volts, 9 volts, and 12 volts. I've got my little USB adapter plugged in. And this will turn it on. Initially, it'll go to the 5 volts because there's no signals to tell the charger to go into a higher voltage mode. I'll plug my load into the 5 volt output here. This is my resistive load and I'm going to draw you know, 2.4 amps basically into this low ohms resistive load. As you can see the voltage is remaining stable on it, which I would expect it to because it will put out 3 amps, although I haven't taken it to 3 amps uh, of current with this particular setup. This little wire here probably won't pass 3 amps, uh, but uh, we're drawing a 2 point, you know, 2.4, no problem, voltage is staying stable. I can also plug my phone in using a USB-C cord. Now, I don't have a USB to USB-C to USB-C. Obviously a PD cable would have a USB-C connector on both ends. I just have a standard USB to USB-C. USB-A I guess it is to USB-C. I can plug my phone into that and my phone will go into higher voltage charge and you can see my phone will charge at one point, I think it's 1.3 amps is what it'll charge at, at nine volts. So that just, that's just set by the phone. The phone sets a voltage on the control line to tell the unit which, which uh, voltage to use. So it uses the data lines and sets a resistance on there to determine what the charge voltage is. And if we look at the different screens here, it's setting on one data line 3 volts and negative 0.6 on the other data line. This is called quick charge mode 2. The next mode is my wireless charger. When I plug in my wireless charger, this one is also quick charge mode 2, but it's capable of 12 volt charging. So by changing the voltage on the data lines it determines that this is a 12 volt capable device and it goes into 12 volt mode. I put my phone onto the wireless charger and now it's going to charge using 12 volts using my wireless charger. Now this will also support quick charge 3 and uh, with that it would go to even higher voltages depending on the device. I don't have any devices that support higher charging voltages than that. But more modern devices will support the 15 and 20 volt charging. It can fully charge a MacBook Pro 13 inch in two and a half hours and a Lenovo Yogo 730 in about two hours.
load this thing down and see if I can make it stall. We'll see if I can overload it and see where it cuts out. I'm just going to grab some more resistive loads to put on here, namely a, a, an incandescent light bulb. And we'll see where we can stall this out and shut it down on the 5 volt mode. So I'm going to add a 50 watt 12 volt halogen bulb, 55 watt I guess it is, 12 volt automotive bulb. We'll add this to the load and see what it does. It should, it should shut down because this should draw well in excess of its rated power, which it does, and it goes into protection and shuts down. And it will stay in protection probably until I unplug it and plug it back in. So severe overload will shut the unit right down. Let's just give it a partial overload. Here we go. Unit still putting out full power. We're drawing over three amps from it now. I think I'm now over the limit of the of this meter. But I, I've now exceeding the current capability of this meter. And the meter is actually getting warm. So this is actually putting out more power than this meter is capable of handling. I don't want to leave it like that because what's going to happen is I'm going to melt the uh, terminals here. The uh, USB-A connectors here, they're only rated for three amps. So by adding that extra load, I was exceeding the measurement capability of this, which is it's probably three amps is where it, it uh, maxes out and just goes to a straight line. So by adding this light bulb, and all I was doing was I was just I was just paralleling some of the resistors here. Um, I was still keeping the unit running. It was still outputting power, but. And the voltage remain pretty straight, pretty steady here. Still putting out five volts, but I'm now over the measurement capability of this unit. So now I've got the, the current up to 2.8. I've just basically bypassed one of the resistors here. 2.8 amps. So if I try to bypass both of them. It's going to go into that overcurrent. But that's really overcurrent. So, yeah, 3 amps is what it's rated at. I'm sure we're going to be able to draw 3 amps, no problem. Uh, these units usually have been pretty good at their outputting their rated power. Let's uh, crack this thing open and see how well this one's built. And then that will uh, end this video. Yes, that's how it comes apart. It is, it is welded together. But we want to get in, crack it on this side as well. As you can see they glued the case together they really don't want you getting into these things but we must because we must see how well this thing is built and is this one built to the standards that the other ones that I've seen from Xcent have been built to which have been very good and I, I can say this one here looks to be just from what I can see here this does look to be built to pretty good specifications the build quality on it looks to be really quite good Everything is, is uh, you know, they've got silicone on the terminals here. You know, not only have they soldered them, but they've also put silicone on them to prevent any vibration from causing the solder to crack. They've soldered the, uh, they've siliconed the wires in place. This is to give vibration dampening because these are the type of things that people are going to drop, right? And they've also, as you can see here, they've also siliconed the circuit board down into the base. That's to gain to give it more impact resistance. So if we just pry this silicone out of the way, we should be able to lift the circuit board out 
and look at the construction quality. So here's the base. This is where the the uh, the, the, the sat in here like um, this was it? it was like this. So the the output terminals here. This is the the DC side. It's got this nice little block of uh, this is like a heat absorbing compound and uh, that's what's sitting here on these terminals so that's going to drain any heat this is the this is of course the high current side the DC side the AC side is over here this is the the higher current side so you, you, you get a fair bit of heat especially through the connector here on these connections and this is going to the way that they're embedded into this heat sink material that's to drain the heat away so you don't get uh, uh, heating expanding and contracting here on the connections here which is what's going to cause uh, failures of them. It looks like the soldering on here is actually very good. Let's get a little closer up view of the actual circuit board. I can keep my camera in focus. I guess that's the limit at this height. But as you can see surface mounted components they all look to be good quality uh, connections I see nothing wrong here with the design let's take a look at the AC input so the AC input here is going through uh, rectification there's a uh, choke filters here to choke off any um, any noise from getting back into the line from the rectification and the, and the DC to DC converter. We've got a capacitor and a coil here. Again, everything's all uh, potted with a silicone type of, uh, of uh, insulation or silicone type of uh, isolation. I'll take out the screw if I can. I don't know whether it's got, it's probably got a nut on the back, so I don't think I can do that. Oh, it's all, I, it doesn't matter. This heat shield here, this heat sink and, and RF shield, as you can see, everything's potted. They've potted everything with silicone. All the capacitors and everything, they've all been potted with silicone. And the reason that that is done is that's to prevent shock because these are the type of things that, you know, you're using this as a travel charger, it's bound to get dropped. It's going to get banged around and dropped. And uh, that's where you run into a lot of problems is components themselves. Just from the physical shock, they, they get damaged or they break the connection just from vibration. So as you can see, the capacitors here, they are silicone in place as is everything looks to be underneath this shield at least everything that i can see looks to be silicone in place this screw here is there's going to be a nut on the back side of that i'm pretty sure just like on the back side of this one here i can't see in there because it's it's filled with silicone so i don't want to take that screw out because if even if i can get it back in. I mean, if it has a nut on the back of it, I'm going to be SOL. And I can't even bend this up because of the all the silicone that's in there, which I don't want to uh, disturb. Because this thing's going to be going back together when I'm done with it. I know the cabinet is now damaged, so I can't sell it or anything, but I can give it away. Which is generally what happens with the items that I've reviewed if I don't need them. I turn around and, and <clears throat> find another home for them after they've been destroyed. We've got uh, isolation here between the AC side and the DC side. As you can see, there's a, not only a slot cut in the circuit board to provide physical isolation, but there's actually a, a barrier here, a barrier between the AC side because your AC is coming in on this side, so this is going to be the main filter capacitors. These are probably rated at 450 volts, I'm thinking, because it will operate at 240. But uh, they're AC brand capacitors, 105 degree. Can we see the voltage on these ones? Let me get my light, see if I can see what voltage these are rated at. to be 400 volts is what they look like. Here's the transformer here. This is the AC side. So, so your, your AC mains voltage is present on this side and that's why they've got this shield 
that's actually going through the board. It's got a plastic shield. You can see that it wraps around right here. It wraps around the DC output board. That's to, that's secondary protection. So that if one of these capacitors were to blow up, for example, or the or the uh, case were to the insulation on the case were to split a contact with the output board because this is the one that you're plugging your device in. This is the DC side here. This is the cold side. Everything on this side is your AC mains side. It's rectified to DC because this is your regulation control, the oscillator and stuff. Here's the transformer. This is going to be the opto coupler, I believe. That's the U4 is the opto coupler. So this is your this is your optical isolation from the the low voltage side to the high voltage side of the oscillator. Um, as you can see, the board's got there's a there's a a, a breach in the the uh, solder mask here. That's to provide some isolation across here, and there's holes drilled in here. This again, there's a good space between the AC side and the DC side, and then I've got of course you've got this this slot in the board with this wrapped plastic shield to completely isolate one side to the other. I'm looking at this thinking the construction on this is very good. So now it's just a matter of putting this thing back together, gluing it back together, and uh, we'll wrap this one up. Link to this little uh, adapter is in the description. So say it, uh, it'll output uh, three amps at five volts, three amps at nine volts, Three amps at 15 volts and two and a quarter or 2.25 amps at 20 uh, volts output. 45 watt charger from Xsense. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one real soon.